scientifically known as minus epicatechin, but we're gonna call it just epicatechin here. This is a powerful flavanol in, found in dark chocolate and cocoa beans, other foods as well. It's been since like 2015 when we wrote our first blog post really detailing some of the research, but recently Anabolic Warfare came out with a supplement known as Project Growth, obviously targeted towards muscle building. It's got some epicatechin as well as some green tea extract. It was time for us to update our article and we didn't have a big video about it, so here we go. Let's talk about epicatechin. So welcome to Priceball, this is Mike. So we're gonna talk about the flavonol known as epicatechin, historically found mostly in dark chocolate and cocoa, but there's other fruits as well that we're gonna talk about. A lot of times in the mainstream media, we hear you know, articles, a new research comes out talking about how dark chocolate has all these health benefits. Now, you know, we're sometimes wary of what's in the, what's in the world of uh, mainstream media, but in this case, it's actually quite true. As long as we put some context around it, and we're talking about the right kind of cocoa, and we're talking about uh, the right dose and everything, but the research is actually pretty cool on this one. So in general, with epicatechin, if you if you eat dark chocolate, and the, the issue with dark chocolate is that it needs to be a high enough standardization of, of cocoa, uh, and I usually think 70 to 85 percent is kind of the sweet spot, but it also cannot be alkali processed. If you alkali process it, you lose a ton of the flavonoids and flavanols, uh, which will kill a lot of the epicatechin content, and it turns out that epicatechin has a lot of cardiovascular based benefits thanks to its ability to increase nitrogen oxide and do a few other things that we talk a lot about a lot on this channel. But later on, we're also going to talk about how it can decrease myostatin levels and increase fullostatin levels. Now the TLDR here, too long, didn't read all that, is I am a big firm believer as a natty, as a natural person who's not on uh, any exogenous hormones or anything, I am a big believer in epicatechin. But is it going to lead to steroid-like gains? No. You're going to notice it if you're injecting tons of testosterone? Probably not. But for us other mere, mere mortals, I do think that there is a lot of uh, beneficial use of epicatechin and dark chocolate. And if you're going to snack on something, 70 to 85% dark chocolate, in my opinion, is a great way to go. So let's get into the research. Now in general, and I'm going to be following along with the blog post in the YouTube description. We're going to have uh, the, you know, the link to that and you can kind of follow along as well. In general, if you're eating like a standard 70% dark chocolate bar that weighs roughly 200 grams or so, what do I have? This one's 85%. That's right. A standard 70% dark chocolate bar is basically in general, it's going to be 1.5 to 2.5 milligrams of epicatechin per gram of cocoa. So with our 70% dark chocolate bar, which weighs about 200 grams, if assuming it's not processed with alkali, you're 200 gram 70% dark chocolate bar is going to yield about 280 or so milligrams of epicatechin, which is a pretty solid dose. There's actually clinical studies showing benefits from lower, but I know you like to eat your dark chocolate, right? The point here is if you don't want to go with the calories because you're on a strict diet or you just don't like dark chocolate because you're crazy, but you know, not a, not a lot of people like that bitter flavor um, and it's expensive. There are epicatechin supplements that are in about that dose range. And that's what's, uh, what's cool is you can get some of the benefits without having to take the extra food. That's kind of the definition of dietary supplement. We can supplement this ingredient and that's what we're talking about here today. In terms of other natural sources though, we have a big list on the site. Blueberries, ginger, fava beans, blackberries, apple cider, apples, green and black tea, uh, like hawthorn, red hawthorn berries. A lot of these foods known as like quote unquote superfoods, uh, a lot of their beneficial activity comes from the epicatechin inside, but also, you know, there are other things inside as well. I can tell you for a fact, blueberries have all sorts of cool stuff inside, but epicatechin is a big driver of the cardiovascular vascular benefits. And overall, we're going to see improved circulation due to increased nitric oxide production. That's going to be a main focus here in this video, but also improved sens uh, insulin sensitivity, improved blood cholesterol levels, which is debatable depending on what you think on the whole cholesterol hypothesis, we'll say. I've made my uh, stink out there about that. Reduced blood pressure, a lot of which comes from the vasodilation of increased nitric oxide production, increased skin elasticity, and then we're going to talk about a little bit about muscle growth through myostatin inhibition. Controversial there, but we have seen some numbers that are at least promising for us mere mortals out here. So let's get into nitric oxide production. On this channel, we talk about it a lot. A lot of these pre-workout supplements have nitric oxide uh, ingredients that help increase pump, increase blood flow, increase neural activity as well, which we'll get into because blood flow is not just to the muscles and other parts of the body. It also, of course, flows to the brain. What has been found is that when taking epicatechin, nitric oxide production increases. And even when taking not even huge amounts of dark chocolate, nitric oxide, 
dioxide increases. So on the blog, we talk about a few of these studies. Some of them are actually like really, really interesting. So for instance, in one study, subjects consumed only 30 grams of 70% dark chocolate da daily. That's not a lot. Like we could do that in our sleep. <laughs> and so um, and at the end of the two week uh, study, their nitric oxide levels were 54% more than control in their blood. And that's like a small dose. So there's something in the dark chocolate that's causing this effect. The researchers start to dig in and we're going to quote off some of this stuff, but they say, and they're citing other studies in here. So you can go down the rabbit hole and like look at what the, stu the studies that the, the researchers are citing in their own study. But they say the vasodilative effects of cocoa was obtained by its capability to suppress arginase enzyme activity, which will lose in the competition with nitric oxide, NO endothelial synthase. This in turn will increase production of NO. The other mechanism of cocoa on vasodilation is associated with increased epicatechin levels in plasma, which will give a signal to release vasoactive components from endothelial cells, i.e. NO and postacyclin. This process will also decrease ratio leukotriene postacyclin to cause vasodilative effect. There's anti-inflammatory potential in here. So what, what's happening, it's tough to kind of tease out some of the dark chocolate from the epicatechin specifically, but it seems to be an arginase inhibitor. And so arginase is the enzyme that breaks down arginine. Arginine is the amino acid that leads to nitric oxide. So when we actually inhibit our arginine killer, we're going to get a little bit more arginine and there in turn get more nitric oxide activity. We see a lot of ingredients do that and it works here as well with chocolate, but also there's more mechanisms under the hood inside of the endothelial cells with epicatechin itself, getting it to release more nitric oxide itself. So I think this is a great ingredient to add to some of those standard like citrulline type of supplements and for nitric oxide act activity. A lot of times in the sports nutrition uh, industry, we do talk a lot about the myostatin inhibition and we're going to get into that, but the nitric oxide boost is what's really leading to a lot of the cardiovascular support benefits that a lot of the older folks love from eating dark chocolate or getting like these cocoa flavanols or epicatechin directly. Now we, in the, in the article, we also talk about how nitric oxide itself can impact muscle growth. This is kind of additive to the rest of the stuff in a sports nutrition pre-workout supplement and nitric oxide deals a little bit with myostatin as well. So we're getting some downstream effects from it, but then, you know, that's not going to be that much different than some of the other nitric oxide boosters out there, but it's nice that we have some additive effects here. We've talked about myostatin and fullostatin a lot, so we might as well get into it. Myostatin is a myokine. It is a muscle messenger. Now it is our body's way of trying to inhibit growth a little bit. And I don't want to, you know, get into the C word or anything, but we don't always want growth at all costs. Like that could lead to really bad things as we know. However, some people uh, watching our channel do want growth at all costs, or at least a lot more growth. And so myostatin is kind of the governor on, it inhibits a little bit of this and it's foil is full of statin. Full of statin reduces myostatin levels a little bit. So you, you have this, this yin yang coming on with these and sometimes myostatin levels are too high inhibiting muscle growth. There's never been like a really, really, really good way of inhibiting it, but there is some research showing that epicatechin is a myostatin inhibitor. Now, not like I said, not steroid like gains, but a pretty good inhibitor here. So in general, in aging individuals, aging mice, for instance, here, the older rodents have 18% more myostatin, 30% less myostatin, like, like a lot of things, our NAD, ATP production, all that stuff, things get worse as we age, myostatin goes up as well. And so that's going to lead to a little bit less muscle growth. And as anyone who's like been out of surgery or anyone who is laid up or whatever, been sick, we want to try to keep as much, as much muscle as possible, especially as we age. When you give it to mice, you can actually increase full statin level by 56%. There was, but however, this study also had a human portion. It wasn't a huge amount of humans. So like take this with a grain of salt because there's only six subjects, but they're 40 years old, middle-aged right here. On average, they're given just one milligram of epicatechin per kilogram of body weight twice daily. This means about 170 milligrams of epicatechin per day, six individuals. And what ended up happening was that their full statin went up by 50%, while myostatin decreased by 16.6%. Again, grain of salt, small effect size, middle-aged athletes, and and not the biggest numbers in the world, but so obviously not steroid like gains, but gains nonetheless. And for natty athletes, I think that's something worth noting. So like I said, since we first covered epicatechin on our blog, a new study has come out. This is a 2019 one, and this is an eight week study on elderly adults. So again, older for individuals, but it's talking about epicatechin and strength. And this one's pretty cool because it seemed to be a pretty well-performed study here. Now we had a group that just had placebo and resistance training. And then we had a group that had epicatechin and resistance training and the epicatechin with resistance training beat resistance training alone on a bunch of metrics, including myostatin levels being lower, including strength and full statin levels being higher. There's a lot of benefits. This is a really promising study, especially for older folks who we don't want to atrophy. You know, like once, once 
an older person loses muscle, it's gonna be really, really hard to get it back. That's why I love giving folks some dark chocolate. Like, you know, get over the milk chocolate. Dark chocolate's where it's at. And then finally, if we look at some, at some rodent studies, we're also going to see increased endurance and like to an insane degree here. So this study, over the course of 15 days, if you just make a rat undertake endurance, endurance, endurance activities, eventually your endurance starts to go down, at least in this protocol, the way they're feeding them. The placebo control group, their endurance activity, they were able to last 806 seconds at baseline, went down to 745 seconds. So probably they weren't giving them the best diet. The rats who got epicatechin, they increased their endurance time. It took them, they were able to last 804 seconds, time to exhaustion. That went up to 958 seconds. Now I know these are rodents, but that's like an astronomical gain in endurance right there. So there is something there I would love to see some human studies here. And it's it's like seriously impressive. But even cooler is rats who got epicatechin and did not exercise, they experienced a similar improvement. They went from 771 seconds to 931 seconds, time to exhaustion. So something in the epicatechin, most likely just better blood flow from improved nitric oxide production. Maybe there's a couple other things happening. They were able to last longer. So endurance athletes should maybe take note of this. Again, rat study, we would love to get some human research, but hey, in this world where pharma runs everything, we, we're not getting the most uh, funding, we'll just say, to study dark chocolate and cocoa flavor and all. So we'll take what we get. It's pretty good research worth, uh, you know, the natties to really look at this. Finally, a lot of times on this, on this channel, we do talk about insulin sensitivity. We want to be able to pull fat out of our fat cells and store carbs into our muscle cells on and off as conveniently as possible without having insulin and blood sugar just like floating around in our bloodstream, wreaking all sorts of havoc and everything. So insulin sensitivity is an important thing. We don't want to be over fat. There are some things that we can do to increase insulin sensitivity. Now, I'm not going to tell you to go and eat 10 buckets of dark chocolate because in general, those calories are still going to add up. But it seems like there's something big with the epicatechin inside. So there is a study. And so we probably should have covered this a little bit earlier. There is a study where the researchers gave the control group actually white chocolate. Now, white chocolate is made mostly, I love it. You either love or you hate white chocolate. You can leave your comment below. White chocolate is made from cocoa butter, which is high in stearic acid, but it doesn't have the flavanols such as epicatechin. Dark chocolate, of course, does have all these flavanols. So it's not a perfect, perfect, perfect control group. They're different. It's decent that we can like talk about cocoa flavanols versus no cocoa flavanols. And it turned out that the participants in this study who were given the dark chocolate, they were looking at insulin resistance as determined by the HOMA IR, HOMA-IR, which is the homeostatic model assessment for insulin resistance, a very well-trusted insulin resistant metric. The white chocolate group was far higher and far worse, 1.72 compared to the dark chocolate group, 0.94. Very significantly lower insulin resistance for the dark chocolate group. So this is like a huge finding. There's something in dark chocolate that is helping the cells work better with the insulin given. So that's a really impressive thing. Now I will say that this study is the same one where I was talking about 30 grams of 70% dark chocolate given daily had 54% more nitric oxide. The control group in that study, I should have said it earlier, the control group was the white chocolate group. So they didn't have any of the cocoa flavanols. I still love my white chocolate, but don't expect to get any like blood pressure support. Now, finally, there may also be some cognitive support. We talk about this with ingredients like nitrosogene and new level. Increased nitric oxide production doesn't just affect your muscles and your other muscles. It affects the, the, the main muscle upstairs here, the brain as well. The brain is very nutrient hungry, which means it's very blood hungry. Lots of blood flow and increased blood flow to the brain. It's not going to make you smarter. I mean, if you, it might make you make bad decisions faster, but in general, um, it does. It, it seems that when we have increased nitric oxide levels, we have increased cerebral blood flow and that allows for faster decision making. It's up to you whether it's good decision making or bad decision making. But anyway, uh, I, I've digressed. There is a 2018 meta analysis that talks about this and it's kind of mixed results because uh, like I said, I, just because you have better blood flow doesn't make you mean you're making, it makes you smarter. But the mixed results, basically there is an agreement that when you have epicatechin increasing nitric oxide levels, there is a an increase in cerebral blood flow. And they, they go back to this 2006 study where they have given a dose of cocoa containing about 150 milligrams of the flavanols. So 100, not 150 milligrams of cocoa, but 150 milligrams of flavanols and then performed cognitive task. And looking at it through an MRI, you see the cerebral blood flow significantly improved after taking cocoa flavanols. Is there more going on than just nitric oxide? It's very possible, but we definitely definitely have seen other ingredients boost nitric oxide levels and boost uh, perceived energy, boost like cognitive speed.
speed scores, reaction times, short term, long term, like a lot of that stuff. But there might be even more going on with the dark chocolate flavanols. Epicatechin though seems to be like the number one constituent. And finally, it is very similar and uh, molecularly to e EGCG that's found in green tea extract. But the epicatechin here, uh, the minus epicatechin, it just seems to be more powerful in terms of like the sports nutrition and the blood flow aspects that we like. Whereas EGCG has a little bit more of the insulin sensitivity activity and some of the weight loss characteristics that, that we like. And that's what's cool. Project Growth actually has both of these inside. Pretty good idea is combining a lot of these flavanols together. But anyway, that's the story in epicatechin. Steroid light gains? No. But for regular people looking for a little bit better uh, blood flow, anti-aging support, and improved insulin sensitivity? Absolutely yes. I am a huge fan of this ingredient. I'm a huge fan of dark chocolate. Don't get that process with alkali stuff though. Get the real deal. 70-85% or just get yourself an apicatic supplement. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Drop any comments and we will keep our articles up to date as more research comes. Unfortunately, like I said earlier, we don't always get the most research, but there is a lot of promising stuff. I would love to see more endurance stuff on this one. Thanks for watching.